I do. You know, the real test is this. You can dream you have uh, a new car, but when you wake up, uh, maybe you don't have a new car. There's nothing there. You can dream you want money, and when you wake up, it's, there's not always extra money for you. You can dream, though, that you're urinating, and, well, that's when you realize dreams do come true. So let me tell you, I'm a firm believer dreams come true, and that's what it's all about on Anniversary Sunday. What do you do when dreams come true? You celebrate, of course. You celebrate sharing the good news. This dream has come true. When you, as a parent, had your first child, you shouted out the good news. I am celebrating the dream has come true. Maybe when you got a job, you shouted out the good news. I'm employed. I've got a check coming in. I'll let you know the good news. The dreams that we have in our life, they manifest in wonderful ways that we want to shout out the good news. Well, in great African tradition, I grew up in Kenya, so this today is all about celebration because the drums would sound the good news down through the villages as the rhythms began to announce something great is happening, something has happening, we're celebrating, come join together. Let the atmosphere be of celebration and of joy because a dream has come true. Well, that's truly what it's all about today. But when you have dreams, well, and they are realities, you gotta celebrate over and over again. Our anniversaries are celebrations, not just of something happening, but something more than just the happening. It's what happened. It's about what we learned in the journey. The most, most important aspect of every journey is the question, what did you learn? On that travel, on that pathway, on that vacation, I had the opportunity of traveling all around the world. I've been around the world twice. I've worn out a backpack going from continent to continent and enjoying the experiences I've seen all kinds of wonderful sights in my lifetime, have the opportunity to see great historical places and experience a wide variety of cultures. But what's most important is what did I learn? Not what did I see, but what did I learn from that experience? So it is, it's important that it's today we're celebrating this wonderful journey that we've been on. 47 years! 47 years of incredible visioning and dreaming and seeing dreams come true. And today we're celebrating that. And most importantly, we're looking back to say and ask the question, what have we learned? That's the most important thing you might ask every day. Wake up. Yesterday's journey, what did I learn? Or at the end of the day, ask, today's journey, what did I learn? What have I uh, gleaned from this experience? Because that's how we grow in wisdom and how we grow in insight and grow in the awakening of consciousness within us. For our journey is one of learning, of being this seeker. We're here in this time, on this planet, in this moment, to be a seeker of gleaning, gaining, embracing more and more the wisdom of this world, the wisdom of this spiritual world that we're in, of this wonderful environment, the wisdom that God unfolds for us on a day-to-day -day basis. For that wisdom then is all about laying a foundation that you can build on. A foundation of knowing, a foundation of understanding, a foundation of greater consciousness and awareness that you can build life on. Because when we go to build, you look down and say, what can I build on? Well, we take account of what do we have? What, do we, what is there that we can work with? And so many people will say, well, is there any kind of foundation? If not, we must lay a foundation. And we lay this foundation in life through the learning experiences and taking account, what did I learn? And we lay a brick. What next have I learned? We lay another brick. What other things have I learned? And then we lay another brick. And slowly, little by little, we lay down that foundation for building a life of great success within our journey. So we've been on this pathway for 47 years, and there's so much we can be grateful for. As we look at what we've learned, let's look back with a visual you'll find on our screen. As Scott plays for us, let's listen back and reflect upon some moments over the last five to six years and some even further beyond. Hey, good cooking, Connie Crandall. 
Ian Klein, remember our minister of music for the past? Celebration Singers. How about a progressive dinner a couple years ago? Good fellowship and good friends. Great opportunities in ministry. Graduations past. We're not going to mention the outfits. So yesterday. Awards given out and honors. Welcoming new staff, Scott Dunn. Celebrating anniversaries of accomplishments. A retirement of 25 years I celebrated. Classes here at the Emerson Theological Institute. Great moments. Fellowship and hospitality. Compassionate work. Giving out clothing, sharing food. Creating meals for the hungry and the homeless down through the years. Silent auctions. Sign language ministry. Appreciating all the talents of so many. Classes and workshops. Celebration moments. Thank you. Just a little bit of look back. Some of you can remember some moments even further beyond, but we wanted to see some pictures of you all. Thank you, Scott. So as we reflect back, we think about this journey, that there was a group of people who had a vision that they began to dream and dream some dreams, starting in a small home, and then that dream began to expand, and they bought a theater building in Virginia Highlands, and they began to grow and flourish and expand, and their mission and message shared throughout the Atlanta community. So much that they then moved on to another theater building on Tully Road. What's it with theater building? Is it a love of drama? I don't know. But uh, hopefully we've gotten rid of all of that love of drama as we moved into a building that wasn't a movie theater. And we're so grateful for this experience of just growing and expanding as dream after dream came into fruition. But what is most important in each dream and each accomplishment, what have we learned? Well, I can't speak for everyone over the 47 years of this journey, but I can speak for the last 19 years that certainly it's been a learning experience. And what we have learned may be some of the most important lesson of life. And that lesson is found in today's scripture text that you read so beautifully today. Also found on the back of your bulletin if you want to reference it once again. Once again. We've learned the beautiful lesson of this. I have. I have. Now, that may seem kind of strange, but let's break down the power of this. For the ancient text is teaching us a consciousness, a way of looking at life, a way of living that facilitates every dream coming into reality. It begins with a feeling, a knowledge, and understanding that says, I have. For that text says, whoever has been given more, uh, whoever has, excuse me, will be given more. And they will have an abundance. And whoever does not have, what they have will be taken from them. Let's break that down, for it seems very confusing. It seems very strange. But whoever has, 
Whoever stops and acknowledges, this is what I have. Whoever begins every day with the I have consciousness begins to be the dream builder. It's the one who says, I have, and I look about, and I, with great gratitude and appreciation, take account of the I have, and embrace this consciousness. Far too many in our world wake up in the morning with the I don't have kind of attitude. I don't have any strength. I don't have any energy. I don't have any money. I don't have any this. I don't have any that. I have no love. I have no this. I, I, you know, we could list all the things. People in our world wake up in a consciousness of I have not versus I have. But for those who entertain every day with the I have consciousness, more is given to you because you're beginning with this wonderful sense of acknowledgement, what already is there. From there, it is, takes on to say, there is a spirit of abundance that unfolds for you. Because when you start taking an account of all you have, and how many remember these old Thanksgiving songs of count your many blessings, name them one by one. We may think of those choruses and songs that we may think about that at Thanksgiving time that call us to think of blessings past and present. And then we begin to think, wow, are we not abundant? And so then abundance rise within our spirit because I have, I really feel abundant. And I feel that I already am living in this realm of great blessing and prosperity. Goodness is all around me, in me, through me, and for me. I feel this all around. It's a consciousness that wakens so many possibilities when you begin to say, I have. Now, that may be difficult for those who say, wait a minute. I don't have, I can't see what I have. I, I can't see anything around me. How can you, all I see is lack and limitation. And so consequently, those who embody that I have not mentality begin to seem to lose out on the things that they already have. Waking up and say, in my marriage, I don't have love, begins the gateway for their divorce and they lose their marriage. For those, you know, and I don't have any money, I really don't have anything, so begins to create the mentality of lack and limitation that quite often they lose the little that they do have. And they become less and less in the abundance or prosperity consciousness. It's all about this wonderful power of thought that begins within us because everything begins with a thought. Everything in our world begins with this, for the back of everything created is a thought. The chair you're sitting on, the back of that chair, the formation of that chair, the start of that chair is a thought. What you wore today began with a thought. What will I wear? That's beautiful. I'll wear this. I'll wear that. I'll choose the thoughts that were there. Created at the moment because it all begins. So everything begins with a thought. So the question is, what is the thought that you're thinking every single day that births your dream? And the thought is, I have. I have. I have because I count my blessings. I have because we have uh, we have experienced so much and we count it we, with great gratitude and appreciation within our lives. That changes everything for all things are tangible in the world of shape, but they began with the thought, the idea, the conceptualization of something. And we begin to conceptualize, I live in abundance. It changes your whole outlook. I guarantee that you will get out of bed with a different type of energy when that consciousness rules and reigns over your life. When you begin to embrace the first thought, I have, I'm blessed, I live in this realm of abundance, more than is drawn and attracted to you because there's not an energy of, of lack about you in any way whatsoever. And if we still the senses within us, calm our thoughts, and we become still we know God, and we know the thought that creates everything, that unfolds everything for us a lot. We'll look and understand, how did I create this? How did I get here? How did I get to this place? How did we get here? 36,000 square feet, building. How did we get here to that moment where we could write a check at the bank and pay cash? Wait a minute, can I say that again? Write a check at the bank and pay cash. Pay cash, pay cash. Okay, ministers don't get a chance to say that very often. So we got to get that out quite often. I got to pay cash. A million six in cash. I love those moments where we went to the bank and we used to say to the banker, uh, I'm sorry, can you tell me 
my bank uh, account. What's in my bank account? I didn't hear you. You said what? Three million? Was it, there's three million in the bank? How glorious the moment when we sold our previous property. Wondering how we were going to get somewhere, how were we going to move from place to place, how we would ever advance when our building itself, the air conditioning and heating system, had fallen apart in the sanctuary. We all remember that. Chilly winters, hot summers, $200,000 bill to renovate the antiquated heating and air conditioning system. And we began to say, I'm not sure how we're going to do it. And then the knock on the door says, can we buy your building for seven times what you paid for it? To go from wondering how we were going to find 200000 to now depositing $3 million in a bank account sounds like a pretty good day, doesn't it? It works pretty good for me. I'd like to have a few more of those. It all comes to this consciousness. How did we get there? Well, we woke up with the feeling that says, I have. And for every challenge that came our way, every problem that came our way, every obstacle that came our way, we didn't give up. We didn't abandon. We didn't say, we quit. This is no way possible. Let's just shut this place down. We began to move in a consciousness that says, God is making a way when there seems to be no way because we live in the realm of I have. And I got to tell you this. In the 19 years I've served here, I can't tell you how many treasurers, God love them, would tell me from the accounting approach, you have not. You do not have. I can remember the first uh, six months, a wonderful, gifted accountant treasurer that served on our board of directors told me, this place will fold in six months. You just don't have the funds. It's not possible. And he looked at me like, you were just insane for thinking of going forward and taking this congregation and thinking it's going to go somewhere because we are this close to closing our doors. And when we have the I have not, yes, he became so frustrated and abandoned the whole program and resigned from the world as treasurer and left the church because all he could think of is this place doesn't have. Where well, the rest of us just went on all day thinking we have and we kept on moving. Is it ignorance? Is it a stupidity? Is it naivete? Is it a sense of like we got our heads stuck in the sand? Or is it a belief that we know that all things work together for good? And that's what the, we wake up in a consciousness of saying, I have in the divine realm, in the spiritual realm. Now, I may not possess it in the tangible in my hand today, but I know that I have for all that the Father has is mine. Beautiful passage. Jesus shared it and invites you to embrace that very phrase too. For all that God has is yours. And you wake up and say, wow, uh, the scripture says, I own the cattle on a thousand hills. Honey, let's have a beefsteak dinner. Uh, or uh, hallelujah, let's, you know, I have all the dresses, the lilies in the field. Well, isn't that wonderful? I could be just having a lovely garden and beautiful flowers and plants. Whatever it may be in your consciousness, it was this awakening in Scripture that calls us to a consciousness that says, everything the Father has is yours. When you begin to live, operate, and walk from that perspective. So one of the things is that I have mentality evokes within us then is a great gratitude. It stirs gratitude because you think about what you already have, but how about what you will have and what is coming to you and what is unfolding for you as you walk in belief and faith. Because this wonderful scripture says for us to believe, and as we believe, we receive. And so as we express believing gratitude, faith that says, I believe, I just believe. I don't hope because hope is filled with maybes. Hope is this uncertainty. Like, I hope mm, it kind of works for you. I hope it, well, if it doesn't, you know, hope is that teetering thing that is not offering a lot of confidence. It's not a big old maybe. It's not a bit, uh, large sign that's flashing someday I'll have. But gratitude says, I invoke the feeling that right here and now, I already have. Right here and now. It is that expectation that is so confident and so assured. And you begin to speak it with gratitude that today all the blessings that I need, everything that I desire, everything that I need for this journey of this pathway that I'm on is already provided for me, and I am grateful for it. I am appreciative. I think this is the foundation of, that has brought us to this place, is this consciousness 
filled with a great gratitude for every moment, everything that we've experienced, we were just so grateful for it and appreciative that we were appreciative for the next moment well in advance. We know we're grateful for what's coming ahead around the corner. What is the next day? What's the next thing unfolded for us? Because when we understand this, I have consciousness. And we understand the power of gratitude being released within our lives. I have this past week been in dialogue with the Metropolitan Community Church of Grand Rapids, Michigan, and some of their leaders trying to offer some advice. They said, we took account of everything. We took an inventory and said, we lack this. We don't have that. We can't afford. We have no possibilities here. The challenges are so great. And so we decided to close. And so we're closing down our ministry. And it was shocking to say, you have a body of 40 people and you're closing? What? Why would you close? Well, because we just can't. We, it's not possible. We lack. We're limited. The challenge is great. And what happened for those then, they lived out that passage of truth in its great reality. For those who believe in lack will have less. Those who believe they don't have, it will slip even more out of their fingertips. Those who walk in this consciousness of saying, all I can see are the obstacles and limitations to my life will never excel and move beyond. So they voted to close their doors. They voted to quit. They voted to give up on a ministry that had been touching lives. But what happened is they lost the gratitude and appreciation. They lost the consciousness. They didn't wake each day with a sense of I have and what possibilities would unfold through that. Because when you go to build, no builder starts with, let's talk a list of things that we don't have. The builder says, wait a minute, wait a minute, do we have land? Oh, check, we got land, okay. Uh, do we have some supplies? Check, we got supplies. Okay, do we have labor? Check, we've got labor. Okay, do we have some funding? Yeah, oh, check, we've got funding. We start looking for all the things that we have and you start building from there. And every day, to build your dream, it begins with this checklist of, I have, and I have it so much that I'm living in gratitude. It's advanced appreciation, shall we say, not postponed appreciation. It's not expressed after the fact, but before the fact that ushers in the energy for dreams to be manifested and come true within our lives. The point of being is that everything begins in mind and everything on the outside is mirrored the reflection of what's already in your thoughts, in your mind. It will mirror it. It will remirror it. It will just reflect it out into the world. So what's going on within you is going to be reflected on outside of you. You feel like you're in poverty, you're poor, you're suffering, you can't. It will be reflected on the outside of you. When you awaken to this consciousness of I have, it will be reflected on the outside of you because you'll now be walking in this full awareness. You'll be walking in the understanding that blessings are coming to you. It's not magic. It's not magic. It's not hocus pocus. It's a spiritual science that's at work in our world today. Business people will quote it. Success mindsets bring success. Yet in our spiritual realm, it was quoted in ancient texts far even before Jesus, far before in the ancient times of understanding the power of mind and thought within our spiritual life and the unfolding of that which you believe within will manifest without. In fact, Mark from the gospel, chapter 11, 24, says that uh, believe that you've received it and it's yours. Wait a minute. I'll believe I received it when it's a mine. That's not what it says. You believe that you've received it and then it becomes yours. You have this great gratitude that you've received it, appreciation that you received it, a consciousness that says I have received it. And that's the power of believing, right? You wouldn't be believing for something, and that meaning exerting faith, faith being that which is the unseen, being manifest. You wouldn't say, I believe for this purse. Well, I already have the purse, but that's easy for me to believe for the purse, right? Thank you. It goes with my shoes. Great. No, it doesn't. Uh, but if I'm believing for the purse, and I already have the purse, is that faith? No, oh, that's not faith at all, because, well, that's not really, you know, you already own it. It's very simple. That which you don't see. 
that which you don't possess, when you start saying, I believe, I believe, I have faith, I claim, I acknowledge, I have, now begins to open up the doors, the gateways of possibilities, infinite possibilities, swing wide open within your life to unfold the wonderful gifts that await you in the journey of your life. It begins with believing, and believing starts with the power of gratitude in advance. And that gratitude comes from this consciousness of I have, I know I have. We think about this, and it's that power of believing that's the back of everything. Everything is this thought, and the power of this thought, and how it unfolds within our life on a day-to-day -day basis. It all begins then with this understanding, this power of abundance that we live in. And that's, I think, what has sustained our community down through the years. Held us, undergirded us, is that we walk and live in abundance. And people say, I don't see abundance. I want to tell you this. I went to this conference in Kansas City. And everybody thinks, now, is your church 3,000? I said, no. Is it, what, 2,000 members? No. A thousand? No. Five hundred? No. No. What? Certainly not two hundred. Nope. Well, wait a minute. You own a thirty-six thousand square foot building. You are running a thousand people coming in your doors every week. You are uh, running a homeless ministry. You are clothing those in need. You are running a food bank and you're providing groceries for them. Uh, you are running a seminary, uh, and you offer all these different modalities of healing and spiritual work and work within you. Uh, and you have to be a church of a thousand, at least a thousand to even do anything like that. Nope. They were astounded when I said, it's a great and glorious, visionary, powerful, imaginative group of people who believe I have. And don't look around and say, wait a minute, I don't have, there's nobody here. We don't have someone here, 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 here. Let's start listing all the have. I don't have. Well, we don't have this and we don't have that. And we don't have, you know, where's our, you know, 40 voice choir. We don't have that. And where's the this and where's the gigantic uh, cathedral atmosphere and all. No. We begin with a consciousness of says, this is what we have and we work with it. And as a result, we have so much more. And people were astounded, shocked. This doesn't work on paper. And I guess that's right because it's not meant to be on paper. It don't work that way. Because when you try to take account of all the things you don't have on paper, that's all you have is paper. But when you put in spiritual mind, I got, I have, I live, I operate, I move and have my being in the I have consciousness. And the abundance is how I live and breathe and move for all that the Father has is mine. And I operate in that way that the spirit then becomes the answer is yes. They ask me, how can you have the largest metaphysical library? Again, you must be a church of several thousand. Because we have congregations who are larger that can't seem to do any of these things. And it's not bragging. It's simply saying I, the testimony of the power of the teaching that works. And you are living the teaching. And 47 years has brought you to this place because of this teaching that you live out every day that says, I don't take account of what I don't have. I celebrate what I have. And knowing this, it makes all things come together for good. I want to tell you this. There was a moment in 2014 when you as a congregation chose a new name. Struggling with leaving a past name, a first metropolitan community church, and welcoming the new name City of Life. And in that birthing process, there was a group of board members who began to lay the foundation for this and began to toss out all kinds of concepts. And the idea there was that there would be a vision that we might create a city of wisdom, illumination, enlightenment, light. For God is light. We might create that, and it might be a city 
of vibrancy, of movement, of activity, of all these things coming. And that happened in 2014 before we bought the building or even knew that we could afford a building or even knew that this building was available or that we might be able to create something. But what we did first was name it. Name it. Before it becomes anything else I name, it is a city built on a hill, as the scripture said, that cannot be hidden. It is a city of light, light that brings glory unto God, that brings awakening and awareness. That's what we've named it to be. And as we named it in that consciousness, it began to unfold. And then as you say, well, if you're calling yourself a city, well, honey, you need a bigger building to be a city, don't you? And so what is what happened is Spirit led us to buy a building twice the size. And we owned it, owned it, only owned it for four months. And then we sold it for a half a million dollars more, best big sale ever, uh, and fresh fundraiser, and bought a building three times the size. You see, after a while, it's what you name, what you speak is what's unfolding for you. If you believe you have and we have a city and we have a city of light and illumination, well, then spirit in the universe says, well, I better get catch up with the faith that they're proclaiming and I've got to provide because I've got to you know, match up with this belief. You see, the whole universe, the energy intelligence is responding to that consciousness that says we saw ourselves a city and suddenly a city provides. And as I said earlier, we're tracking about a 1,000 people coming through our doors every day. And that's only in year three. Good Lord, get ready for year number four. And what five and six unfold? Maybe we got to change it to metropolitan or metropolis or what's the big or urban or state of light uh, or universe of light. Or where are we going next? Because this is our dream. Well, what do you proclaim when you start with this consciousness that says, for those who believe, to affirm with gratitude, I have, more is given. More will come. This is the very truth that works. If you don't believe it, then touch this carpet, touch this chair, touch this wall. Reach out and touch someone else because you're evidence that the teaching works. That the scripture given in ancient by ancient writers is alive today, and it's vibrant. It's called the living word, and it works for us, and it works for you, and you, and you. It's not just regulated to a church or to me as a pastor. It's available for each and every one of us to be living out every day. So today we're celebrating a journey, but make it not the journey of the church, but your journey, your journey. You are people of the I have consciousness. That's how you got here, and that's where you'll go tomorrow. Amen.